Hello and all right everyone. It's September 2021 and I'm in London and I've come here to travel on an underground line, but not just any underground line. This is a line that many Londoners have never seen and don't even know exists. Because for 76 years, underneath the street right here, there was a private underground railway that never appeared on the tube map. It had its own trains, its own tunnels and its own stations, but you could only travel on it if you were a mailbag. And although the line closed down in 2003, a few years ago a small section was reopened as part of a new museum, opening it to the public for the first time. So I've invited my friend Amy, who was already in town today for a Hidden London tour and didn't need much convincing, and we're going to take a ride on it. Welcome to Mail Rail, also known as the Post Office Railway. This is the mail rail train, or at least it's one of the new ones that's been built to carry passengers for the museum. But because the system was designed for mail bags and not people, space is going to be tight. So our first task is to store any bags we're carrying in the lockers provided. Filming and doing things at the same time. With that done, our second task is to try and get the front seats on the train without me creating an awkward social situation. Is it alright if we go to the front? Yeah, if you decide to go to the front. Thank you. Yes. Mel thinks that you'll just let your mum go for three fat. Can we go? Rather than. Yeah. You've just offered us the possibility of going at the front I mean, of the train. I mean, obviously which is we're so going to go at the front of the train. Yeah. <laughs> well, one out of two isn't bad, is it? And I did check that there weren't any kids waiting behind us who would have really wanted to sit at the front. So, as we set off into the tunnel, we have got ourselves some nice first row seats with a particularly good view of the back of the driver's head. Hello and welcome to Mail Rail. You're about to explore some of London's hidden underground postal railway. The route that the museum takes you on is a round trip starting from what used to be the maintenance depot, down into the platform of an abandoned station, around a loop at the far end, back through the other platform of the station, and finally returning to where you started in the depot. And as we enter the station, we pass by one of the old mail trains that was left behind when the line shut down 18 years ago. So why did London build an underground line just for the mail? Well, the station is called Mount Pleasant, and directly above us here is the Royal Mail's enormous London Central Mail Centre. And yes, Central, that really is Centre, what it's called. At the beginning of the 1900s, this had become one of the busiest sorting offices in the world. And that began to cause issues. The problem was that mail arriving by train at Paddington in the west of London, or Liverpool Street in the east, had to come to the sorting office by road. And even in 1911, London already had serious traffic congestion. This led to major delays delivering the mail. And this was the days before emails or even widespread use of telephones. The mail was important. A report came out concluding that London's traffic speeds would never surpass 10 kilometres an hour, while an underground train could do more than 50. This convinced Parliament to approve plans to build a railway. The proposed line was 10 kilometres long and connected the two railway stations, the administrative headquarters at King Edward Street, the main sorting office here, and a string of smaller sorting offices, for a total of eight stations between Paddington and Whitechapel. The route ran more or less parallel to what was then the Central London Railway, or what we now know as the Central Line, with a small detour for Mount Pleasant. And bonus fact, back then the Central actually had a station called Post Office at King Edward Street, but that was later renamed and became St Paul's. The project went ahead in 1915 and construction was almost immediately hit by delays, not least because it was the middle of the First World War but the system eventually opened on the 3rd of December 1927, just in time for the Christmas post. The railway was fully electric and fully automated. The trains had no drivers. Everything was controlled centrally by operators using a switchboard. They were basically playing with a giant train set. 
although in later years this job was done by computers. And for three quarters of a century, these weird little trains scuttled underneath London with no one on board, quietly getting on with the job of delivering the mail. A small army of battery-powered locomotives was on hand as backup in case of failures or faults. The drivers of these vehicles were among the very few people who ever got the chance to ride on the railway during its operation. I'm kind of jealous, but as Amy helpfully demonstrates here, those cabs were not exactly luxury accommodation. Was it everything you dreamed of? Yes. The line changed relatively little over the years, although it gained one extra station in the 1960s after the Western Delivery Office moved from Wimpole Street to Rathbone Place, requiring a small diversion from the original route. But I think this was the last time the Royal Mail opened a new sorting office in central London. By the 1980s, economic pressures caused the pattern to reverse. And that was bad news for the railway. Offices started to relocate further out, to suburbs like Wilsdon and Bromley-by-Bow, and one by one, the central London locations were sold off for redevelopment, and one by one, the stations that came with them closed down too. When Whitechapel closed in March 2003, it left only three stations still open, and with the system now running at about a third of its original capacity, mail rail was simply no longer economically viable. Two months later, on the 30th of May, the last train delivered the last parcels, the electricity was switched off, the workers went to the pub, and that was that. Or was it? Because the post office railway was never completely abandoned. It was more what they call mothballed. The Royal Mail was aware of the unique piece of industrial heritage that they had on their hands, and the potentially lucrative possibility of reopening it as a museum one day. So they kept a few employees down here over the years to perform a minimal level of maintenance and ensure that the tunnels remained safe and secure. And although only the small section at Mount Pleasant has been returned to working order for the museum, the whole system is still here. The tracks still run all the way to Paddington in one direction and Whitechapel in the other. So if you've got a few million in the bank and you fancy your own private underground line, why not send them a letter? If you'd like to ride the post office railway and you're not a multimillionaire, an adult ticket costs £16 in advance online and there are reductions for children and disabled visitors. Your ticket includes one round trip on mail rail plus a year of unlimited access to the postal museum across the road. Accessibility on mail rail itself is unfortunately limited. You'll need to be able to lower yourself into the train and in case of an evacuation, get out of the tunnel. Alternatively, a virtual version of the ride is available. And as always, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.